guys, what's up? I uh, got a question a while back about how I make my uh, work positioning lanyards. And I know it's been a while, but I'm here now. And tell you what, I need to relax over here. I don't really want to be sitting back in my climbing line. And guess what? I just happen to have the exact materials I need to make a simple work positioning lanyard. Now, this isn't the most simple thing you can do, but this is like your basic work positioning lanyard. This is what probably 70, 80% of people use. And I used this for a long time before I switched to a mechanical adjuster. So let's throw together just a pretty inexpensive uh, work positioning lanyard. Let's go. A work positioning lanyard is basically just a miniature double rope system that you use for as basically a short second climbing system to uh, as either a second line of life support or being your life support where you when you're advancing your primary line and also just yeah work positioning being more comfortable where you're working you know if you're a climbing arborist when you're using a chainsaw or any other cutting tool you're required to be tied in twice so this is usually your second tie and you have your primary line and then you have your secondary uh, lanyard life support system usually when you're tree climbing so let's toss one of these together basically the ingredients I have here today are pretty inexpensive uh, I don't know what making one of these would run you if you're just you can just take a rope from one, a short section of one of your climbing lines. Uh, usually I typically use about 10 to 12 feet for my uh, work posi positioning lanyard. You may need less or more depending on what kind of trees you want to work on and how much rope you want to be managing all the time. Because sometimes longer lanyards can be nice, but usually you don't need all that length and it can be kind of a pain in the butt to store it somewhere. So I would say, let's say, quick math. Let's say you can make one of these for about a hundred bucks. You can probably make it cheaper than that. You can probably make it more. Well, I know for sure you can make it more expensive than that. But it's probably gonna run you for something that's gonna work well and you're not gonna feel the need to upgrade it. Uh, this is gonna work really great. And pretty inexpensive. Uh, you can substitute out different items in here. But uh, yeah, probably you can make this for about a hundred bucks. What we're gonna start with is we need our rope, you know, short section of climbing line, otherwise life support line. Uh, this one here I think is a little bit longer than I would use is about 15 feet. Then we are going to need our uh, kind of termination connector, which today I'm going to be using a rope snap. These are pretty common for people to use on lanyards. You usually wouldn't use this in a primary climbing system, but they are quite common for uh, work positioning lanyards. They're very easy to open. You just have your safety on the back and then you're able to open the gate. Uh, so we're just going to attach this to the system. You could use any number of knots. My preferred knot is a scaffold knot. A scaffold knot is kind of like a barrel, barrel knot or a fisherman's knot. But basically you're just going to pull out some slack. We're going to wrap down over once. And then when we come around again and pass over this end of the rope in the knot, basically turning it from an overhand, a simple overhand knot to a uh, uh, scaffold knot. There are probably better diagrams online than what I'm showing you right here. But we have our scaffold knot with some ample tail. We are going to dress that down, pull it nice and tight, and then cinch it up on the carabiner. You'll know that you've tied the knot right if you're holding the working end of the line, not the tail. And when you pull on the working end, it cinches down on your connector. Just make sure you're tying it properly. This is what's going to be keeping you alive. Now, I've got a little bit of tail here. You can either tape that down, or if you're being a little bit more thrifty, you want something more durable than tape, you can sew it down. Just make sure to use a uh, not a leather working needle or any kind of needle that's designed to cut. You want a ballpoint needle that's going to go right through. Use something thicker like whipping twine, or maybe you could use dental floss. I would prefer whipping twine, just some basic nylon or polyester thick twine that you can use to just bind that tail down. It'll make it a lot easier to retrieve when you're pulling it through the crotch of a tree, but just doing this works just fine and this will get you started. So now that we have our connector on there, uh, I'm just gonna put it around the tree so I can attach our adjuster. We're just using a basic adjustment system with a double locking carabiner, which is required if you're gonna be doing work at height. Uh, if you're rec climbing, you can kind of do whatever you want. I would still highly recommend a double locking connector. They're not, they're uh, a little bit harder to use, but once you get used to it, you can use them incredibly quickly. 
and this is your work positioning lanyard. You won't be opening this carabiner a lot, so it's good to have something that's robust and gonna stay connected. Uh, now, so we have our connector, we have a micro pulley. There's a lot of different options for micro pulley since this one does not need to be load bearing. You can uh, use any kind of pulley. You could just use some, if you found something from the hardware store that works, you could just use that as long as it doesn't have sharp edges and isn't gonna damage your lifeline. So we got our pulley and we got our prusik cord. You could just make this from some accessory cord, uh, but it's best to use something that is heat resistant. This has all the tan fibers in this, our Technicora. The black is polyester tracers. So the Technicora is much more heat resistant and this is gonna last you a lot longer. It's gonna be a good bag for your buck. So uh, you can, uh, if you don't have a spliced or sewn end like this, you could just do a, a scaffold knot like we just did on our connector on either end and use that to connect it to the carabiner. So there are various amounts of knots you could do, but honestly, you can just get away with wrapping it around the rope. So here we have our uh, lanyard going up to our connector and we are going to wrap up the line. And you can honestly, if you don't know any friction hitches, you can just make it work by just keep wrapping it up, keep wrapping it up, keep wrapping it up. And then just, you could just connect it. That's not the most stable knot, but it will definitely work. And if you have a backup knot in there, this is not going to fail you. Probably not. No, I'm not an expert. It hasn't killed me when I've used it. <laughs> but if you want to use something that's a much more uh, trusted knot, just a simple variation of this, turning it from a valdeton to a valdeton tress, is just if we have this end from the top coming down, if you just place it underneath the uh, bottom wrap, and just kind of let it braid around to the front so it's just going under once. If you have more tail, you could keep doing that. You could probably do it again, alternate them, cross them over again. That just stabilizes it a little bit more than just wrapping it. Now, we got that there. So now we can add our connector and our micro pulley. So what we'll do, this is a little bit hard to do this at height, so I would recommend doing it on the ground, not in the tree like I'm doing. So I've lost a couple micro pulleys off cliffs doing this. But so we have the micro pulley on and we're gonna connect to one side of the Prusik cord and then through the micro pulley and then through the other side of the Prusik cord. Now something I would personally recommend is that your connector, uh, whichever, if you're using a uh, tree climbing harness or an at height harness, you have the side attachment points on either side. That's where your uh, uh, lanyard is usually going to be. I would recommend that if, so if you're gonna put it on your left side, you have the gate facing out to the left so that we have our tail down and press it on top so that when it's connected to you, the gate's just facing away from your body. Just a little bit safer. I prefer it that way. In my mind, it makes it safer. And then to finish off our system, we're just gonna do a backup knot at the end. You can do anything you want for a backup knot. What I prefer to do usually is if I just have a rope like this, just do an overhand knot or you could do another scaffold knot and then just clip this to a carabiner somewhere else on you. The reason I do this, instead of just putting a, a backup knot in and just letting it hang, is that uh, some people would say that you have this loop dangling from you on the tail end of your system and that it could get caught on stuff. And it does, it does get caught plenty. But when this loop gets caught, since I usually only use a 10 or 12 foot lanyard, it's caught somewhere where I can reach and just flick it off the branch that it's caught on. Whereas I used to just have it dangling down as a tail and with a 10 or 12 foot lanyard, that can be like nine to 10 feet below you when, that, when you have that backup knot in there. And if that backup knot gets caught in a crotch, then you have to down climb to get it unstuck. So that can be really annoying. Even though this may get stuck a little bit more, you can, it will usually always be within your reach to get it unstuck from something. So now we have our lanyard system. Now I can just, place it around the tree, tighten it up, and now I'm safe to go on this now. Now I have a separate climbing line if I needed to reposition my main tie-in or disconnect from it, or just I want to be a little bit more comfortable, have a second uh, spot to tie in to stabilize me, now I have that. When you first tie these friction hitches, make sure to test them on the ground, make sure they do what you're going to do, and always make sure you have a backup in your system in case the hitch fails. So that's just the simplest, uh, not the simplest, but pretty much the most basic work positioning lanyard you can do 
and it will serve you well. You can use that for absolutely anything. But if you're interested in learning more about work positioning lanyards, I will be posting a more in-depth video after this on the different types of work positioning lanyards you can use and variations you can do, as well as several mechanical devices I have that I use uh, regularly as my lanyard adjuster. So if you're interested in that, please uh, stick around for that video and uh, stay safe and have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you got a nice new lanyard that you can use.